immediate left. Okay, he is with the University of Guam. We have got Mary Okada, who is the president of Guam Community College. We have... Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, good afternoon. As you know, I'm not the Underwood that's on the program. Uh, but I, I, uh, and I don't mean to speak on behalf of the Guam Department of Education. It's just that uh, Nerissa, uh, they're working on the State of the Education Address, which is scheduled uh, for 6 p.m. this evening. And so there's a little time issues. But uh, basically, um, uh, the, uh, the, the Guam Department of Education uh, faces a number of challenges that are, uh, that are coming along with the potential military buildup. A lot of them have to do with the introduction of um, a new group of students. Uh, some of them have to do with the facilities, and some of them have to do with personnel. And to, in order to contextualize this a little bit, uh, out of the uh, 41 school plants, uh, that are in existence uh, in the Guam Public Schools, uh, over uh, two-thirds of them are uh, over uh, 40 years old. So they immediately you have uh, problems and challenges with the facilities. There's anticipated that in spite of the six new schools that have been built recently, uh, there are seven more schools that are going to be needed over the course of the next five years. And that's not taking into account really the impact of the military buildup, but simply uh, part of that are replacement schools and part of that are just to do with the natural growth of the uh, student body uh, that will be attending the Guam public schools. If you take into consideration the potential number of students that come uh, from the military buildup, it is anticipated that there will be at least a civilian population increase of 20,000. Uh, many of them coming from the U.S. mainland, some come from uh, uh, Micronesia, and some from uh, foreign sources. And that that new uh, uh, population, probably about uh, four to 5,000 will be of school age. So that presents, again, new problems. The, the issues that are attendant to building new schools and the issues that are attendant to staffing the schools. Because at the same time, that the, uh, there will be new schools being built and there will be uh, new positions that will be hired and estimated maybe another 300 new teachers uh, to fill the positions that will be needed for uh, the new public schools and to deal with the new population. The Dodea schools will be building seven schools in order to accommodate uh, increases in the, uh, in the uh, military population, dependent population. It's unclear, at least to, to us at this time, and, and uh, I'm sure it will become clearer over time, as to what extent maybe others will be eligible to go to the day of schools other uh, than, uh, than students that are, uh, that are military dependents. But it does mean that there will be uh, competition uh, for uh, professional personnel. Uh, it already, uh, due to the nature of the facilities, due to better salaries, due to perceived better uh, conditions, uh, the Dodea schools are already benefiting by taking teachers, not, not deliberately of course, but by uh, teachers moving over to the Dodea schools. This will increase with intensity over the next few years. So there have to be some discrete uh, planning processes in place that allow the pre professional preparation of teachers, certificated personnel, to be seen in a holistic whole and in a way that protects, I think, the uh, uh, Guam public school systems. Thank you very much. Okay, Mary, you are up next. day and good afternoon, everyone. The Guam Community College several years ago did a series of things to um, take, it, take into consideration what's happening on Guam with the military buildup. One of the first things we did was we went back and updated our strategic, institutional strategic master plan, which clearly identified what the key areas or initiatives that the college needed to focus on over the next several years um, and tie those, that institutional strategic master plan with other plans that already exist. For example, we have a facility master plan that we did in 2005 that was supposed to address the potential growth for the institution over the next 15 years. Well, in the fall of this semester, uh, we, you know, the report showed that we were going to anticipate a period of about 3% uh, growth over the next several years. In the fall of this semester, we showed a 20% increase in enrollment. 
In addition to all of that, the college took a look at the facility master plan and identified if we were to increase our capacity, what exactly did we need to do, which buildings did we need to identify first, and how are we going to move those、uh, plans forward. Uh, we took an aggressive approach and said, "Okay, the best way for us to identify funding was to develop the architectural and engineering associated with those buildings." So we did that.、Um, in addition to all of that, we started our community outreach. Outreach programs are very important because, for a long time, there were some、um, misconceptions about what the what the college was supposed to be doing. So we went out on the road into the communities, into the region, to identify. With our stakeholders in the community, what is it that they needed for the college to do? We've been offering adult education and GED now in the uh, villages, uh, based on the enrollment capacity that we are able to、uh, generate from the from the villages. So we've done that.、Uh, we've identified、um, specific areas in、uh, businesses that we've needed to increase. Um, additional programs. We've identified additional programs that were necessary and went through our accrediting commission to identify how we're going to add those programs, either by piloting them, offering a certificate or an associate's degree at some point. And so we're really starting and continuing to gather the information so that we can move forward with the different initiatives、uh, that we have. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Bert, you're up. Well, thank you so much, and Hafadi, welcome to、uh, the forum. It's so nice to see so many faces still after lunch on, the, on Friday afternoon.、Um, the GCA Trades Academy. We feel fortunate to be even invited up here because we're kind of the, the young, young kid on the block. We're only about three years old. In fact,、um, just last month we celebrated our three-year anniversary. But we started back in October of 2006 with a focus in on training workforce development in the construction trades, and our focus was on working adults. And to be able to attract working adults,、um, we wanted to develop a program that would get them involved in this. And so we put our criteria very simple. We were looking for people that were interested in the construction industry and had a willingness to learn.、Um, we chose that because of the fact, first of all, we're training for the construction industry, but we also believe strongly that if you really want to enjoy your job, you want to find a job that that you're good at, but something that you really enjoy. And the second criteria was in the willingness to learn, because if you didn't have that willingness to learn as a learning institution, there's nothing really that we could do with you. And you know, when we looked at the, the labor statistics, they had, when you looked at the 170,000 population on Guam, and you looked at the number of people that were in, in the workforce and those people that were unemployed and looking、uh, for jobs, you also had a number that was off to the side, and that number was about 40,000 people that were 16 years of age and older that were not. In the labor force, that means they weren't working. That means they weren't looking for a job. They just didn't want a job, and that wasn't the target audience that we were looking at because the fact that there's a reason why those individuals are out there, and it's because they can. There's something out there that's keeping them from wanting to look for a job, and because of the fact that they weren't looking for a job, we felt that's not the target market we were looking for. We were looking for people that were working. And we were looking for people that wanted to learn, and so we went after that that audience. And we realized, first of all, that a working adult, in one hand, is juggling their work environment, and then, especially on Guam, on the second hand, they're juggling their social environment or their family environment. They wanted to get that.、Uh, we wanted to be able to work that around that. The only way you could do that from an educational aspect was to put a flexible program in place, and so we did. We put a program in place that, first of all, guaranteed that you would complete the class. If you were taking a class from us and you didn't complete it for whatever reason, where there was transportation issues, where there was、um, your work hours changed and you couldn't come to class, it didn't matter why you didn't complete the class. You took it again.